The World Health Organization defines self-care as the ability of individuals, families, and communities to promote health, prevent disease, maintain health, and to cope with illness and disability with or without the support of a healthcare provider. In McGarrigal and Walsh's journal, self-care can also be described as an individual's ability to balance personal, professional, emotional, mental, physical, and spiritual components in order to live in a balanced, energized manner that assists one in coping with day-to-day -day stressors. Self-care manifests itself in a multitude of ways in my life. I have become very spiritual in the last few years. I look to crystals and their healing properties to soothe my anxiety, lift my spirits, and sometimes even help me with my physical ailments. I enjoy collecting them while learning about their origin, their symbolism, their healing properties, etc. As I'm studying human services and hope to build a future career within this field, it is important to note that my job can become stressful. Due to the systematic, organizational, client stressors, and the possible negative impact of hearing traumatic stories from clients, it is imperative that human service and social workers develop adequate coping strategies for positive self-care. In this course, we have read about how in this career one can experience burnout. To counteract such, we utilize what is called a maintenance self-care plan. My maintenance self-care plan involves yoga or meditation to keep me grounded. I use journaling and aromatherapy like candles and essential oils to keep my mind feeling at ease and to just kind of help me relax. I look to being in nature and surrounding myself with it to connect back to myself. I do this by hiking, taking walks, taking care of my plants and seeing them thrive, or even going to my mom's farm. My maintenance self-care also involves some of my hobbies. I enjoy cooking. I love it. Um, I cook every day at home. I also enjoy bowling. I've recently joined a bowling league with my family. I just got a new bowling ball and some new bowling shoes. Lastly, as both a maintenance self-care and sometimes even emergency self-care, which I'm about to talk soon, my cat Noma plays a big role in my life and well-being. Being her caretaker fills me with a sense of purpose. Her love in the form of snuggles and purrs brings joy into my life and shows my mental health in a way I'll never truly be able to elaborate on. My emergency self-care plan involves being alone sometimes. Alone time is something I look forward to as it is a way for me to decompress and recharge. I enjoy my own company, so that can be spent in my room playing video games or even taking myself out to dinner because I really love to eat. However, my emergency self-care plan also involves my best friend and partner. He can melt my anxiety and soothe my mind better than any crystal or yoga pose ever could. He's been in my life since we were both children. He's also someone I can always count on to be there if I'm struggling and someone that even when I want to be alone, I don't mind if he's there with me. Another way is just taking time to myself, um, taking that vacation that I think everyone needs and deserves. It's always good to just get away for a while. I love to go to St. Augustine, Florida. It's one of my very favorite places to go. It's just to rest, recharge, so that burnout can hopefully be avoided. The last and most important in my emergency maintenance plan is to remind myself that I am worthy. The way that one talks to themselves is very important. I have a tendency to become uh, very negative to myself um, in my, the form of my thoughts and just, you know, the way I think to myself, I am very hard on myself. So I love quotes like this one here. It is a good reminder to remember your worth. Once a month or so, I pick out a new quote for my phone background that always reminds me to talk to myself like I'm proud of me, myself. Do you speak to yourself like you would to a friend?